Ahead of its launch next week, I want to take today to talk about Metal Hellsinger VR. Now, truthfully, I only got my hands on this game yesterday. It's very highly anticipated, but I had kind of not overlooked it, but not gotten around to getting in touch with the devs. They got back to me really quickly and got me a key. Uh, and I was planning to play about an hour and give you kind of like a first impressions video where it's just my edited gameplay. But instead, I booted up the game and then proceeded to play it for the next three hours. That on its own is a bit of an endorsement for Metal Hellsinger VR. And while this VR port has a couple of issues, nothing massive, but they are there. All in all, I absolutely love this game. And it really reminded me back when I was on PSVR 1 playing Doom VFR with the AIM controller. It's that sort of gameplay that brings you back to Metal Hellsinger again and again. And I'm really happy that this monster slaying B game where you traverse through the depths of hell taking on various enemies with a multitude of weapons and an incredible soundtrack has made its way over to PSVR 2 because this is a really good one. So the whole point of Metal Hellsinger is to merge the gameplay elements of previous games like Doom with rhythm games. And this feels a bit like Doom meets Beat Saber, to be honest. And overall, they do nail it, but we're going to get into that a little bit more when we talk about gameplay and gunplay and enemy design. But first and foremost, the PSVR 2 port, what are we saying about it? Well, visually, it's pretty good. It reminds me a little bit of post-patch switchback and how good it looks. It has a similar level of detail, uh, but a little bit below that. There's a bit of shimmer, especially in text and straight lines that are quite thin in the game world. It's definitely not the best looking PSVR 2 game, but it's by no means the worst. It's decent looking. There are moments where it can look really smooth and amazing, and then there's moments where the visual presentation falls apart a little bit, I think due to maybe anti-aliasing, not being quite as strong because of the performance that they want to hit with this one. So. It's by no means bad, but it's not in the tier of, say, the smoothness of Walkabout Mini Golf or Red Matter 2 or something like that. It's not up there, but it is pretty damn good. In terms of performance as well, it's a bit of a strange one. I originally thought that this game was running 60 FPS reprojected. But then I jumped over to Horizon Call the Mountain again and tried out a definitely reprojected game, and it doesn't feel like that at all. I think the game is running unreprojected, so it is buttery smooth in terms of traversal around the maps, but it felt like my hands were running at a bit of a different frame rate than the rest of the world. It wasn't that they were lagging behind or anything like that. It just felt as if there was a little bit of ghosting on my hands, but maybe that's just to do with the color palette and the style of the game, not merging well with the OLED panels or something like that. I don't really have an explanation for it, but overall the gameplay does feel very, very smooth and I didn't run into any performance hitches or anything like that. PSVR 2 does make itself a great platform to play this game on though, as you are going through the depths of hell. And the color palette of vibrant reds and blacks really pops on the PSVR 2 headset. I was really impressed by how vivid and colorful some of these areas are. That's cool, you feel it in the hands, the rhythm. The game is made up by nine levels, including one tutorial level, which should take you around three to four hours, I would say. I'm nearing the end, but I'm not quite there. But overall, I played enough and tested around with the mechanics to land on a verdict for these impressions. Because again, I didn't think I'd play this much in my first outing with the game, but it was just so, so fun. You progress through these levels by killing enemies in that Doom style with various weapons. From dual revolvers to swords, a skull that you can fire projectiles out of, a shotgun, which is the most satisfying gun in the game, or boomerang style weapons that come back to you when you throw them. The weapon variety is pretty good and usually you'll encounter a new weapon every level or so, giving you something new to play around with very frequently. Gameplay wise, it just simply feels fantastic. There's no other way to put it. This game, a bit like Hellsweeper VR, which I get confused with very often for this one because of their similar namesake, they have the same feeling of wanting to bring you back and keep on playing. When they're in the swing of things and in the peak of gameplay, it is addictive as crack. It's so damn good. I feel that a little bit more strongly about Hellsinger than Hellsweeper though, just because of the BPM aspect where you're trying to hit on the beat to do extra damage, which adds a real momentum to the gameplay. It's a similar way I get sucked into Beat Saber and can play that for hours because I'm getting sucked into the songs and the music and it's similar here, just instead you're killing demons. The music as well is adaptive and if you know what that means, you're going to be very, very happy. These are little touches in video games where music progresses depending on the situation. Metal Hellsinger VR uses this to essentially add different layers to the music the higher the score multiplier you have. Say if you get up to 16 times score, then an entire backing track, the vocals, the drums, everything will be going crazy, and that's when you're really in the height of gameplay. 
If you're a little bit quieter and you're only on a one or two times multiplier, maybe you'll just hear the guitar and the drums and that'll be it. It's a really cool way of elevating the combat on a musical level, which increases the momentum and pace of the game as you play. You'll come across quite a few enemies throughout the game as well, from big brutes with guns to really lanky tall fellas with big AOE attacks to small undead creatures that are being puppeteered. They're such a cool visual style and the enemy variety does keep things fresh. Games that do this well feel like a game of chess. We are trying to figure out the strategy to take out which piece at what time to make sure that you beat the level and it's a similar feeling here. There's also a really cool enemy that goes invisible and then comes back and tries to attack you. That feels a lot like the Lichter from Space Marine 2 as a topical example and they're quite creatively designed. Speaking of creatively designed, the entire game, the art style is pretty fantastic. I really was in love with how this game looked, especially the art direction for enemies, the weapons and environments. Incredible stuff. Each time I'd load into a new level, I would be blown away by the sheer scale of everything. And these levels are introduced to you through cutscenes as well. The small cutscenes that you have are presented in a third person POV, but it's third person as in you can look anywhere you want around the map and take it in before the level starts, which is much appreciated. I did hear when the game launched on the flat screen that some people found that the level design was a bit samey, but I didn't feel that way at all. It felt like I was back playing Switchback VR, where each level presents a new environment for you to fight through, and each level has a different theme. You might be in an Egyptian tomb inspired level and then go off to a modern skyscraper inspired level. There's a lot to love here in terms of the variety. As you progress through the levels as well, there will be torments unlocked, which are side levels that you can play through that unlock different perks, and this can add a bit of replay value to the game and variety. I think the completionist runtime for this game is six to seven hours. So for the price of 25 pounds, you're getting about three to four hours for the main campaign. And then for full completionist, if you want to do everything, six to seven. So that's how much bang you're getting for your buck. And while I did love basically everything I've just talked about, there were a couple of other flaws aside from some of the visuals not falling apart, but being a little bit shimmery that I talked about earlier. Another issue is that while the weapons are fun to play around with, by far the most effective is the shotgun. There's a reason I love it so much and you kind of fall back on it all the time because it does heaps of damage, is quite easy to reload and is really reliable. And it kind of gets to the point where you might as well just use the shotgun whenever you can because it is pretty much the best weapon in the game. But who knows, you might fare differently. You might really enjoy using the revolvers or something like that. But each of the weapons are fun if you do want to experiment. Also, the boss design is very samey. They have different attacks, but the actual designs of them are pretty much the same until the end of the game. But they do throw, as I said, different attacks at you to keep it a bit more fresh. Overall, Metal Hellsinger VR is a fantastic PSVR 2 port, but most of the criticisms that I saw apply to the flat game apply here as well in terms of gameplay design. However, I really, really enjoyed my time with this. However, for the price, yeah, it does have a fairly short runtime if you're just playing through the main missions. I'm around three hours in and I'm heading towards the last one now. So that puts it in perspective a little bit. Again, there are side content, but overall it depends if you're really interested in doing that side content or just here for the main missions. One final little thing as well is that in the main menu to access the settings, it's not a traditional menu. It's actually a bookshelf with a bunch of books on it and you select each book, which is a different settings menu, which I found really cool. That's such a neat implementation of a mechanic that is so overdone in flat menu sometimes. I don't know, just thought it was neat. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Are you going to pick up Metal Hellsinger VR? I've really enjoyed my time with it, despite it being fairly short. Please let me know in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to our patrons and YouTube members. Luke Bentley, Phil Irving, Hazit Mirza, Ace Gamer, Heavy Pickle, Jin007, a license to chill, Sun WTF, Fat Controllers, The GameCat, Andrew Ehrenreich, Jason Parker, Lamar Hall, Jordi Bansma, Lemon64K, Outcast VR, Prophecy777, and Gundy Gundy. Thank you for watching once again, and I hope to see you all in the next one.